Good evening, everyone. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Friday, September 7th, 2012. Here's a quick look at what we have lined up for you this evening. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Dan Badandi speaks with the president of the Massachusetts Republican Assembly, Dave Kopaz, about the growing takeover of the UN's Agenda 21. Plus, TSA kicks a woman off a flight for simply drinking her water. Then, Melissa Melton reports on the globalist position to forcefully downsize Americans into their little cage. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. And we begin this evening with breaking news in the escalating world conflict with Iran as Canada has announced that they will suspend all diplomatic relations with Iran and is expelling Iranian diplomats from Canada. They are also closing their embassy. So again, Canada closes embassy in Iran and expels Iranian diplomats. Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird announced in a statement today that the Canadian government is formally listing Iran as a state sponsor of terrorism under the Justice for Victims of Terrorism Act. Baird says Iran is viewed as the world's most significant threat to global peace and security. So this is very serious indeed. You know, usually when you start seeing countries pull out diplomats expel foreign diplomats and close down embassies, that's usually a sign of very bad things to come. It usually means bombs are going to start dropping somewhere. So again, this might be the beginning of a major conflict with Iran. Details are sketchy at this point, but uh, stay tuned to uh, Infowars.com. Check out the website over the entire weekend for updates as they occur. Meanwhile, I want to talk to you right now about the Federal Reserve, the privately owned Federal Reserve, that is. They are about to pump more fiat dollars into the economy as job growth has predictably and dramatically declined in the month of August. The unemployment rate varies depending on you know which studies you look at. The government's U6 figures show unemployment at around 14.9%. This is in the start of August. Reuters is reporting, and they are way off the mark, they are saying that it's only 8.3%. But the seasonally adjusted SGS alternative, or excuse me, alternate unemployment rate puts the real jobless figure at about 23%. In August, another 8 million Americans were working part-time, and that's double what it was at the start of the Depression. Additionally, 5.2 million, also doubled the number of four years ago, are marginally attached to the labor force. Combined, this adds up to 25.8 million Americans. That's the real number, even ignoring the nearly 400,000 who mysteriously dropped out of the labor force. So this is truly unemployment at epidemic levels, coupled with underemployment and low wages by corporations who are well, no doubt they are adopting the China slave wage model. I mean, that's, that's what this is. Uh, this is the banking cartels engineered depression. This is by design. So in the latest unemployment figures is probably the last, uh, the last piece the Fed needs before launching another quantitative easing uh, probably sometime next week. As the economy crashes, of course, at the same time, the crime rate spikes. It's, you know, they go hand in hand. The economy crashes and uh, the crime rate spikes alarmingly uh, so right now because we're seeing some numbers and statistics here as well. Here's an infographic that we put together uh, from sources like the, uh, we got this, uh, the sources from the FBI and the D Department of Justice that shows an extremely alarming rate of an increase of burglaries, property crimes, robberies, and home invasions. According to these figures, one out of every five homes in America will experience either a break-in 
or a home invasion. That's one in five. So with numbers like that, uh, you know, you can't deny that it's probably a good idea to start protecting your home. Uh, you know, maybe get some, uh, you know, an alarm system and get firearms. You know, protect yourself, defend your family. And we have a good example of someone who recently did just that. This is a story out of Kentucky that made headlines this past week as a 92-year-old man defended his home from an intruder. His name is Earl Jones. He's a farmer and a war veteran. And earlier this week, you know, he heard some noises down in his basement. This is like about 2 o'clock in the morning. So he grabbed his 22 caliber rifle, sat down on his chair, and waited for the intruder to surface from the basement. He said he could hear, you know, steps coming up from the basement. They're growing louder and louder. And then suddenly the burglar kicked the door down. I guess the intruder, 24-year-old Lloyd Maxwell, was trying to surprise Jones by breaking into his house at 2 o'clock in the morning and kicking his door down. But, uh, you know, the old man had an uh, even bigger surprise in store for the intruder. And he shot him right in the chest, and he killed him. And the guy uh, took a hit to the chest. He took a couple steps back, and then he fell all the way back down the stairs where two of his buddies were at the bottom of the stairs. They had to drag his dead body out of the house into their getaway vehicle, and they all got out of there in a real big hurry. So, uh, you know, obviously they messed with the wrong guy. And I want to pay, play a clip right now. This is where a Cincinnati reporter asked Earl, Earl Jones why he called 911. Let's check it out. People wonder why you didn't dial 911. Why? I'm a military man now. I ain't going to dial somebody. I have to wait for an hour that them guy shooting me in the face and gone or what that kind of stuff. And now, if I hadn't shot him, he'd have been in here attacking me or whatever, you know. That's seconds. That isn't no damn hours. <laughs> we got to love this guy. I mean, uh, he's 92 years old. He's a World War II veteran. And, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, three thugs try to, you know, they break into his house and, uh, you know, he lets them have it. He gives them what they deserve. And wouldn't you know it, you know, I was checking out the, some of the mainstream media press about this. And, you know, they tried to demonize Earl Jones for, you know, simply protecting himself. Who knows what these guys were capable of doing? They could have come in, you know, it's home invasion time. So he did what he had to do. But the, the liberal press was saying that he should have called the cops and he should have waited for the police to come there and handle it. So this is, you know, the typical kind of reaction that we've learned to expect from the uh, establishment media. They want us to be totally dependent on the police. They want us to be totally dependent on the government. They want a nanny state. So, um, you know, and look, the, the economy is crashing. So there's no doubt that while the economy crashes, that criminals are going to be more and more desperate as that goes on. So, you know, it's definitely time to... Get a firearm to protect yourself, to protect your family. It is your God-given right to defend yourself. All right, let's move on. We have more TSA news. And uh, yesterday we showed you a video where our very own InfoWars reporters were detained at uh, right here in the Austin uh, International Airport. And the uh, confrontation was captured on video. You can still see it on our website, or you can go to the Alex Jones channel on YouTube and check it out. But now we have another incident, and this one is out of Houston, where the TSA prevented a woman from boarding her flight as punishment for refusing to allow their agents to test her drink for explosives. So here we go. This, of course, after she's already gone through security, she's already gone through, um, you know, at least the uh, either the grope down or the naked body X-ray. And now after she's gone through all that, now they want to test her drink that she purchased. So uh, this is more police state conditioning. And the confrontation was also captured on video. We're going to take a look right now. Do you think that I'm honestly a threat? Do you think that? No, 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 but with your attitude. No, 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 wait, wait. So, wait, let me get this straight. This is retaliatory for my attitude. This is not making the airway safer. It's retaliatory. So, pretty much says we have. Is that legal? Yes, it is. 
So there you have it. You know, the video is kind of scratchy. So in case you missed it, you know, it was a little hard to hear. The woman says, let me get this straight. This is retaliatory for my attitude. This is not making the airways safer. And the screener admits that, yes, it had nothing to do with security. So apparently the TSA can now kick you off a flight for having what they believe is a bad attitude. Only in America. Speaking of America and speaking of the police state, have you seen those? They got black boxes now that they put on uh, police cars, either on the top of police cars or in the back. And, uh, you know, most departments have these now. And they are roof mounted license plate readers, basically high tech, uh, high tech surveillance cameras. And they automatically scan roads and parking lots with lightning fast optics capable of photographing a license plate in the blink of an eye. Hundreds of license plates are captured in a single patrol, you know, one patrol or squad car, and just one day's work is going to capture thousands and thousands of license plates. And according to documents recently obtained by the Gazette in Colorado under the Colorado Open Records Act, we now know that the license plate readers allow the police to construct searchable databases of hundreds of thousands of license plates belonging to ordinary drivers. So, you know, this is not just for lawbreakers. This is for everyone. And uh, the information gives investigators a look at where people travel, how they spend their time, and it's all characterized or uh, characterized in an internal police document that uh, they say is a massive intelligence base. So now they are recording the movements, uh, you know, our movements over time from place to place and putting it in one large database. They're saying hundreds of thousands here of innocent people are being tracked, but that's just in Colorado. Like I said, these things are all over the country, so chances are, you know, it's millions. It's millions of us that are now being tracked by the police, and uh, no doubt about it, you know, Big Brother is watching in more ways than one. Okay, now we're going to take you to a, a new video that was just recently put together by our very own Melissa Melton, who explores the UN land grab that is Agenda 21. Let's take a look. I'm Melissa Melton reporting for Infowars.com. As Agenda 21, the United Nations plan to take control of the world from the local level up grows across America under the guise of the Green Movement. Our national sovereignty, our personal freedom, and our very way of life is under attack. What is, the, what is Agenda 21 for new listeners? Why is it important? And what are the new big developments? I mean, is it safe to say the battle is joined right now, Rosa? For people who don't know what Agenda 21 is, it's basically, it's not what is Agenda 21, it's almost what isn't. It is the blueprint, it is the action plan to inventory and control all land, all water, all plants, all minerals, all construction, all animals, all means of production, all energy, all information, and all human beings in the world. It is a completely comprehensive plan, it's global, and it's implemented locally. Agenda 21 highlights include the destruction of the family unit in the name of sustainable development, with people being forced to live in tight, compact cities and high-rise stack em and pack em apartments no bigger than this 16 by 16 foot space. I decided to ask people what they thought about the UN's plan to get people on the grid. So would you live in a house no bigger than the size of this square? Uh, it feels like a jail cell, a cell. no way. <laughs> I mean, it's impossible. Well, you know, it depends on what my options would be. If this was the only option, I, I'm sure it would be living under a bridge. You need one at least twice this size. This would be your entire house? Yeah, three times this big, really. <laughs> yeah, I've lived in one about this size, and it was like being an animal in a box or something. Would you do it for the good of the earth? Maybe. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes, I would. You would? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Agenda 21? I haven't. No. 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 Agenda 21 is a plan we've been signed on to with the United Nations where we give up our property rights and freedom and be forced to live in apartments no bigger than this square. What do you think about that? I think that's terrible. It sounds kind of like 
Chinese foreign policy or interior policy regarding their house and how they're controlling all aspects of your life. I don't think it sounds fair. Oh, wow. <laughs> This map, entitled Simulated Reserve and Corridor System to Protect Biodiversity, illustrates how the UN's Agenda 21 plan would work in the United States. Under this takeover, all personal property rights would cease to exist. The red zones, which make up the map's majority, will be mandated for little to no human use. The yellow zones are buffer zones for highly regulated use. Only in the scant green areas is any normal human use allowed. The tiny black dots are the dense megacities, where transportation will be tightly controlled, freedom will be restricted, and people will be packed in like sardines, living in tiny 275 square foot units amounting to little more than jail cells, all in the name of saving the earth. Let's move right along now to Agenda 21 micro apartment scheme being beta tested in New York City. Yeah, they passed a law last year, 2011 in Germany, saying that all new homes by 2020 could not be single parent. You've got to live in these big dormitories. And now Bloomberg, who wants to control what you eat and what you do and ban your guns, says these studios and one bedroom apartments, they're like closets, will be no bigger than 275 to 300 square feet. That's called a tiny supermax cell. These tiny living spaces are smaller than currently allowed by building regulations. And uh, they say this is good for the earth. See, they can raise more taxes. They'll charge you more for a 200 square foot cell than for a thousand foot. This is how this works. More for less, the eugenics, Agenda 21, post-industrial slave model. They're actually already beta testing these micro apartments in New York City and San Francisco. Have you heard of that? I haven't. I'm afraid not. I think we need to support uh, abandoning this idea. All the way to well, now. it's not going to happen if they're dealing with humans because no one's going to bow down and say, yes, we are living in this. Not everybody's going to do it. Yeah. But... As Agenda 21 creeps across the country, more and more people will be forced to face it. While sustainable development may sound like a beneficial idea, is giving up all of our liberty in the name of the greater good really such a good idea? I'm Melissa Melton reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Now, thank you, Melissa. Now, you know, the, of course, the elite, uh, they're not going to expect to live in those, they're not going to live in those tiny little apartments. They're going to expect you and your family to do it. And uh, for those of you who want to know more about the UN Agenda 21, I suggest this book right here. It's called Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21. All the information that you need to understand what is happening in your town, why it is happening, who is behind it, and what you can do to stop it. Check it out. It's by Rosa Corey, or excuse me, yeah, that's it, Rosa Corey, and it's available right now at InfoWarsShop.com. That brings us to our quote of the day, this by Mike Marsh, RFID pioneer, and he says, only a couple of companies in the world have the experience of building these machines, although the market need, if RFID did take off, would be for, for about one million of the machines running in parallel. Wow, that's Mike Marsh, RFID pioneer, and Mark of the Beast specialist. Yeah, that's going to do it for the first half of our show. We're going to take a quick break. But when we return, the UN Agenda 21 discussion continues. This time with Dan Badandi, he's going to interview Dave Kopaz. He is a liberty activist, and uh, they plan to uncover the landmark planning policy that is UN Agenda 21. That's coming up next, so stick around. The Info Wars Nightly News. We'll be right back.
Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com. And your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dan Bedondi reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. And today we're going to talk about a very sensitive subject. And we bring it up often here on InfoWars.com. Agenda 21, which is the modern day eugenics being pushed by the United Nations. And today we've got a guest via Skype from Massachusetts, Dave Kopez. He's going to be joining us momentarily. First, I want to get in a brief history about Agenda 21. Uh, we're going to go, first of all, show you a cover of this disgusting bill, this law they're trying to push called Agenda 21. And as you can see, the, the document, I mean, it is disgusting and grotesque. We're going to show you a picture of that in a second. And, folks, Agenda 21 is so diabolical. I and mean, people think it's this great thing, you know, we're here to save Mother Earth. We're here to push this great greed peace movement, you know, to save humanity you know, from uh, CO2 and everything else. But there's Agenda 21, folks. That is just pure disgusting. It looks like a pile of puke, if you ask me. And we got another one accompanying this, uh, Ecoscience by John P. Holdren. Now, John P. Holdren, folks, is Obama's science czar. He's openly stating the same thing in Agenda 21. We need to reduce the population, force inoculations, ban in private property. I mean, it is disgusting to the core folks it really is and we're going to move on to the biodiversity treaty map now folks take a look at this map uh, right there folks i want to take a good look at this the red zones what you see there the red zones are off limits to human beings this is when agenda 21 is fully in effect those red zones which is a quarter of the country at least are off limits to human beings and as you can see, the color-coded charts, are the green or the black in some charts are called smart zones. That's when all the humanity is pushed into stacked metropolitan zones. You're not, old, you're not allowed to own a car. You're told what you're going to be in school. You have to get permission by the state to have a kid, and the state raises a child with a one-child policy rule, which Obama said he would sign. This is on record. And uh, we're going to get into this history quick. Uh, back in June 13th, of 1992, President George Bush signed Agenda 21. This is C-SPAN here at the Rio Summit. And it goes on. October 2nd, uh, a few months later, uh, 1992, the United Nations Agenda 21 pushed in Congress. This is another C-SPAN House session. I mean, it, it, this is crazy, folks. This is treason in our country. And now we move on to June 29th of 1993, Mr. Great President Clinton 
Uh, he forms the President's Council on Sustainable Development. His exercises, I'm sorry, his ex executive order 12852 to implement Agenda 21. Selling our country out, folks. And in June 3rd of 1997, Congressman Sam Farr wrote this letter for the 17th District of California in support of local Agenda 21. Then we move on to this other document in 1987 to 2011. UN Agenda 21, the sustainability development introduced in the U.S. Congress. Now, as you can see, folks, this is a brief history. And this uh, conference, uh, Congress, I'm sorry, a 265-page document. I mean, it is that diabolical, folks. And uh, before we move on to Mr. Kopaz, I want to introduce a book here we have at Infowars.com, Infowarsstore.com. It's called Behind, Behind the Green Mass of UN Agenda 21 by Rosa uh, Corey. Great book. I read through half of it. I didn't get to read it all, but great information, folks. And Dave pointed out uh, when I was talking to him before the interview, this, in this information here is very valid, but it's constantly being updated by the UN. Yeah, they're constantly changing things, adding things, but this is a great description of Agenda 21, folks. I mean, I read through half the book, and I wanted to read the rest, but I had to get some sleep. But uh, yeah, this is available on InfoWarsStore.com. A yeah, great price, too. You get, there's other deals. You get the book with a combo and everything else. Again, InfoWarsStore.com, Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21. And uh, this is a great book, folks, and we got to move on to our guests. Uh, we don't have much time. We're running late today. And before I introduce Mr. Kopaz, he was a president of the Massachusetts Republican Assembly. Um, he's got a long list of titles, so I'm going to actually let him uh, fill you in on his titles because we've got a long list here. And uh, Mr. Kopaz, Dave Kopaz from Massachusetts, how are you doing, sir? Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me on the show today. Oh, it's a pleasure. And uh, well, if you want to give a brief introduction to yourself... Sure, sure. Uh, again, my name's Dave Kopaz. Uh, I was born and raised here in Western Massachusetts. I uh, live in the town of Ware. Um, I um, have two sons. We homeschooled uh, our two boys, uh, David and Luke, and I uh, went to uh, college and I studied the environmental sciences, plant and soil, and um, went on to get my degree in that. And uh, I started my own business when I got out of college. And I wanted to stay close to home, having a young family and all. So I didn't get involved in the large environmental uh, corporate world, and I stayed more affixed to the residential type stuff. Um, and I also did some municipal service, which is where I got involved with conservation, uh, which uh, today I, I'm a uh, town's conservation agent and the chair of the conservation commission and their open space committee. Um, and I also helped find, uh, found their agricultural committee here in town. So uh, the environment has always been something that's been very close to me and uh, something that I have a, a personal respect for. Uh, how back in the mid-90s when Windows 95 came out and the Internet became a friendlier place, um, I bumped into Agenda 21, which you just introduced. And what I think is most dangerous about this particular document is that it's really not a bill. It's, uh, it's not even a treaty um, that will ever see the light of day and be discussed. This is a, a policy document. It was signed into soft law, which uh, it's important to note that it doesn't need legislative approval. It only needs administrative approval. Um, so basically any uh, town board or nonprofit organization or a land trust could essentially go up and a la carte style, pick out things that it wanted to incorporate out of Agenda 21. All right. If you want to, um, uh, sorry to cut you off, if you want to give us a brief description to the new viewers out there, because a lot of people are familiar with Agenda 21, thanks to shows like uh, Infowars.com and w the work you're doing. I, I mean, I've seen conference, I've seen you speak in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, and you're, you're, I mean, you're great. You could speak for two hours easily, and I know that, and I'm sorry the time's so short today. Uh, but uh, give a brief description, the diabolicalness of this Agenda 21. Well, I, I basically have uh, land trust, uh, groups that I used to think were out there for all the right reasons, uh, telling communities they're going to preserve farms for future generations and then ban tractors in perpetuity through the conservation restrictions, which is the only way they can get grant money. So we're looking at a system that's built to be abused, nonprofit and green groups springing up around to take advantage of that, 
and we're really looking at a top-down government control of a green economy. And I can assure you, it's full of waste. It will not work because all the market signals are skewed. And we're seeing people losing their private property hand over fist. And here in Massachusetts, we have 157 land trusts. That's a land trust for every two towns. It's incredible. And oh, yeah, right in the document, Agenda 21, they're openly calling for the abolishment of private property. And it's also on the Georgia Guidestones, a New World Order Ten Commandments that somebody should destroy. But, I mean, like, uh, it is disgusting. And uh, they don't want you owning your own property, or even a car at that. Yeah. I mean, it, things like that, people often say that's conspiratorial. But uh, let's look a little closer to home. Here in Massachusetts, and, and as a Republican, as you mentioned, I'm the president of the Massachusetts Republican Assembly. We exist to reform the GOP. And um, our own general counsel for the GOP in Massachusetts in 2010 applied to HUD for a grant. And in this grant application, um, in Section 3.1 in particular, he calls out uh, for those things, those resources he's going to use and incorporate into Central Mass and throughout the state. And in it, he refers to Agenda 21 as that landmark policy document. And of course, ICLEI. Today, they call themselves ICLEI Local Governments for Sustainability. But when they were created, and their function to this day is under the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. Article and it's, it's communism. And, and we know the CFR, they're the ones with the Kremlin Proud House in New York City. They created the United Nations out of the uh, League of Nations and pushed the United States into it. And it's all communism. Agenda 21 is today's 1930s eugenics. Yeah, we got to stop letting people say that that can't affect us here, that the, a U.N. Uh, document like that doesn't have the power of law. Uh, well, it doesn't until we uh, infor put it into enforceable law ourselves, which is what's happening. That's the U.N.'s global-to-local plan is to go right around legislative oversight and, and the bright light of day and go right into people's communities. That's what ICLEI does. And, and by virtue of taking their policy, we turn it into enforceable law in our own communities on town hall floor. We have got to get on those local boards. Absolutely. And the work you're doing is great, Dave. And, uh, yeah, we got to spread more awareness about Agenda 21. And even though we cover it here a lot on Infowars.com, we still don't cover enough. I mean, uh, a lot of people out there think Agenda 21, if they know Agenda 21, it gets disguised as Greenpeace, uh, saving Mother Earth, and they got all the non-government, uh, uh, NGOs, non-governmental organizations uh, to promote this stuff. Oh, we got to save the Earth, so this is such a good thing. And those people, they're conspiracy dares talking about this. So, you're, Dave, you're a conspiracy theorist, and you, you should be a terrorist, you know. And, uh, I mean, it's just it's incredible. And speaking of a community, we were talking earlier, um, a gentleman by uh, Vincent DeVito, you were talking to me about him, uh, Institute of Energy and Sustainability. Uh, what's your take on this guy now? Well, he's a Mass GOP general counsel as well, and he, and he is also the, the uh, director of that nonprofit group. And all as they do is spin off green groups and green business. And again, it's a top-down, uh, uh, co complete government-driven economy here. And he's bringing this into the state. He specifically applied for that grant and named Agenda 21 as one of the resources that he was going to incorporate uh, into that social networking scheme. It's unbelievable. So and it's folks, not part of the folks, says his contact information right up on the screen. They have Vincent... Uh, the veto. Uh, I mean, like, give this guy a call and tell him, hey, we don't want Agenda 21. Even if you don't live in Massachusetts, folks, give this guy a call right now. Leave a voicemail. Flood his mailbox. Say, you know what? We know about your Agenda 21. We don't want it, and we are not going to uh, accept it. Bottom line. And let All these right. people know. And it takes the citizens to stand up to say, you know, to these elected officials, whoever this guy is, no. Bottom out, no. We do not want Agenda 21. We know your plans. We know your agendas. We don't want it. Bottom line. Yep, go right to the GOP's website. The state committee's there. They should be aware of it. We had an anti-Agenda 21 resolution down at the, the convention. Now, I am uh, one of the 17 Massachusetts delegates that got chopped. I was a delegate in 2008, and I kept my word and did my duty. This time, they chopped me. I heard uh, about that, Willie, because you supported Ron Paul. Well, I've been a Ron Paul supporter since, uh, you know, the late 80s. But uh, nonetheless... Uh, I got up there and I pledged in front of the people in my district that uh, I would go down and vote for uh, Romney on that first vote.
but I was bringing with me a message of liberty and private property rights because I was going to make sure that Agenda 21 resolution grew some legs. Exactly, and people need to be aware of Agenda 21. You do such a great job. And I want to talk about, um, which I, to I was talking to you earlier in Rhode Island, they had a uh, replan and sustainability development uh, conference. And th this is going on all over the country. And uh, again, what you were talking about, how they have these conferences for, you know, for all the, uh, the rich people, all the people who run the state, to say, oh, we're going to bring in these development projects. To, you know, we're going to uh, confine all the humans into these to sell your private property, to give up all your assets. And, you, got, you know, we don't want you owning property on the beachfront. We don't want you owning a house out in the wilderness. We want you in this metro zone, and it's for the environment. You know, you're doing a good thing for humanity, and they brainwash these people. And uh, if you want to give a description what these uh, conferences are about. Well, yeah, I mean, this is classic visioning and consensus, and they're shifting away from that language now because uh, we're on to them, basically. But uh, the most modern language, they call them charrettes. And it's really, they, they go out and they, they look for people in your community quite often that are uh, longtime selectmen, uh, a business has been in town for a long time but always someone who's already on board with what they're doing. They call these people stakeholders. And when they go in, they have these visioning sessions, and they generate a consensus. And what comes out of these consensus is turned into a press release and uh, marketing and propaganda. And pretty, pretty soon, they're speaking for the whole community. Now, I went to one of these. They sent some uh, stuff to my office. And um, not only are they trying to regionalize the conservation agent's position. Is that the application? We could, Good. we got that on screen. If you could put that on screen, guys, uh, the application for the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Yeah, now that, that's it's in a, the documents. That's a social networking uh, grant application to reach out to like-minded groups, and it, it's part of this consensus building within the entire region uh, that Mr. Devito works in. Now, I went to one, and there were 43 towns in my district, and there were five people at this meeting. Two of them from Northampton two from Amherst, and myself. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the People's Republic of Amherst, but they fly the U.N. flag in front of Town Hall, if you can believe that. Oh, that, that thing is a trash bag. I mean, I did a report on the U.N. flag at a Korean War Memorial, even though the U.N. was involved with the war or whatever, but to hang that trash bag on American soil is a smack in the face to anybody who served our country. Yep. And everything our founding fathers stand for, that flag is total disrespect. That flag symbolizes pure evil bottom out pure evil and it is an apostasy a epiphany whatever you want to call it it is highly disgusting to even have that flag in this american soil country i mean it yeah. makes me sick yeah. it really does i'm lost for words about that flag now the town right next door where the other two representatives were from uh, in northampton now i got an article recently where they are they're actually touting the fact that they have locked up 20% of the land mass of that town. Off limits uh, are highly restricted to uh, human access and all resource extraction. Now, that's nothing to be proud of. They're, they're economically hobbling that property forever, and forever is a very long time. Well, they did that up in the Quabbin, because I lived in Ware for a while. The Quabbin, you know, where they uh, confiscated the, uh, the whole town. It gave the, uh, the town a week's notice. I forgot when this was back in uh, about uh, 80 years ago, whatever. They took, kicked everybody out of the town. You got a week to get out. They built a giant reservoir for Boston. That's what, how many miles away? But uh, most of the land that they didn't develop the uh, reservoir for, they still got it restricted, and you can't walk in that property. Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. But, I, I mean, there, there's always going to be those that would argue that we needed to do that as a water resource, but there are land grabs out there they're simply uh, not even called for. And if you look around the country, there are states where 75, 80 percent of the, the land is federally managed, federally controlled. Oh, yeah, Arizona and all those western uh, states, I mean, you're not allowed. Big signs everywhere. Government property, no trespassing. Violators will be shot on site. Yeah, it, it, this is crazy. And um, I want to switch gears a little bit. And uh, it's Agenda 21. Uh, the more of a diabolical plot of Agenda 21. Now, uh, on the inoculations, the, um, the eugenics, depopulation, one child policy, I want to get your take on all this. Well, I'm not a big vaccine fan, anyways, and yeah. I don't know if I'd want to wallow in the weeds there. But when it comes to population control, 
Um, you know, I, I often say to people, I said, what would be the effect if we made sure that we had an extremely well-funded Planned Parenthood in a national health care plan that only cared about the productive? What would that do to a population over time? And all of a sudden, people get saucerized and say, wow, I guess it isn't so crazy that people higher up who think they, are, uh, they know better might have a plan that could actually be actionable. Oh, yeah, and they call for fertility control. Right in uh, John P. Holdren's uh, Ecoscience, uh, yeah, pages 837, and anybody wants to check that out, that's also part of Agenda 21. And they're calling for depopulation of the planet. And like I was talking to you before the show, anybody who's seen uh, the 2010 TED conference meeting, uh, Bill Gates openly stating, which uh, the Gates Foundation is one of the leading uh, uh, companies that give out vaccines to third world countries. He's opening stating to reduce the world's population with this mathematical equation, to reduce the CO2, we need to reduce the world's population by coming up with newer vaccines. But no, 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 they're safe for you, though. They're good for you. And Obama, you know, on record said he would sign a one child policy uh, proposed by China, uh, uh, execution vans, all that uh, draconian stuff. I mean, this is. This is all Wells 1984, Dave. I mean, like, I can't say enough. Agenda 21 covers all aspects of this uh, Orwellian world, this communist system. Well, speaking of Obama, and this is something that people should have fresh in their mind, um, he just passed, uh, or not passed, he wrote himself out an executive order recently uh, for that rural council. Now, he came out and they publicized that it's only affecting about 16% of the population, but that's that important as our farmers and we got to stand behind them. Well, when the government's own numbers say that only 6% of the country is urban, that means that 94% of the land mass represents that 16% of the population. What a giant land grab that was. Oh, right. yeah, they, they want to stand behind the farmers, all right? That's why they're going, they're going uh, confiscating raw milk, raw cheese everywhere. If right. you're growing uh, crops out of non-GMO, you're growing organic, you're a terrorist. Uh, you're, you need psychological evaluation in some parts of the uh, country. Uh, they're just attacking the farmers everywhere. If you're not, not, non, you're non Monsanto, non-GMO, you don't belong here, bottom line. And they're confiscating farms all over the place and, and uh, the sake of national security to beef up the borders near Canada. You know, it's, it's crazy. They're doing it under the name of preservation. They're putting farmers in stress, so they need grants, they need something to stay alive. And these land trusts will come in and say, hey, we'll purchase your development rights. You can keep farming and do what you're doing right now. You just can't build the houses and factories and, you know, all this other baloney. Well, you know what? They reference something called best management practices, and they only reference the title of that document. And what happens every few years, they get a few brainiacs from some uh, think tank or for, from some university, and they tinker with the best management practices, the standards within them. So you take a farmer that'll go out and look at a property and say, yeah, I think I can make a go of that. I can possibly de live with those restrictions. And then he signs on, that bundle of property rights goes out the window, and, and then the green coats get in there and they tweak the standards to say, well, now we want a 500 foot buffer, dust buffer around every field. No longer can you mow within 500 feet of a road or a residential property. Well, how many bales of hay or bushels of produce is that? And how many farmers will that one change alone put out of business? It's incredibly, it, it is diabolical. It is, and uh, what they do too is they put strings on the farmers and our chicken. I don't know where chickens worth five, six dollars, but they make them on these regulations. They have to have a tracking chip on every animal, yeah. and the tracking chips cost more than the animal itself. I mean, uh, how is farmers supposed to make a good uh, profit? How are they supposed to make a living? That's why farms are closing down all the time. Uh, we had a problem right in uh, Agawam, Massachusetts. Remember that guy who ran for governor, um, uh, uh, mayor? I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Well, the, um, the the state came in and confiscated his goat farm. They oh, took his goats. I don't know if you remember that in the news, and uh, I wish I could remember the guy's name, but I mean, it just shows you the power grab that's going on. You can't own farmland. You can't own any land that uh, violates the, uh, convers uh, you know, uh, the environment. You know, it's just crazy. Oh, it, it yeah, is. I don't even know how to describe it. And uh, 
Yeah, and any uh, you, any websites you want to promote right now? And um, you know your website. I know you got a couple of Facebooks out there. And uh, Dave here does a lot of conferences, folks. Uh, if you want to uh, YouTube him, Dave Kopaz. I mean, like uh, he's got a lot of conferences he does. Uh, you do two-hour segments easily. And I wish I had more time with you, brother. And uh, a lot of great information. Um, yeah, if you want to give us some, uh, yeah, your uh, Facebooks and everything else. Yeah, uh, well, my Facebook page is, uh, I usually post almost everything I'm doing. I do a radio show and a TV show on community access myself, so I post that type of stuff up there. Um, I'm revamping my old campaign site. I ran for state committee uh, last go around, so uh, pretty soon I'll have uh, DaveCopaz.com uh, switched around, and that's going to cover all my uh, interest in what's going on as well. And, of course, uh, the Republican Assembly, I know some of your listeners aren't into uh, uh, getting into the political sandbox, but for those of you that are Republicans and want to get in there and reform the Republican Party, I suggest you look up the Republican Assembly in your state as well. This is a, a, a national group, and we're there to reform the party in the right direction. Small constitutional government. Good job, brother. And now, uh, closing comments, I want you to describe where the U.N. is going right now. Where are... Where are they at this point in time right now with their Agenda 21? Uh, we well got our head in the noose, and, and it's time for people to wake up. And, and we got to start backing out of these regional contracts that we have with regional planning commissions, councils of government. They all have eminent domain authority. And come into your community, call something blighted or a redevelopment zone, and bang, bang, boom. Yes, they will scrape your house right off the face of the earth. And redevelopment means going from a home to open space, so don't be confused on this stuff. Get involved at the local level. I mean, it's, it's heading towards socialist land use control. All right, this is uh, underpinned by a philosophy of socialism and collective uh, rights, supposedly, of the land. All right, so we've got All right. it. Thank well, I want to thank you for your time, Dave. Uh, Dave uh, Kopaz, Red Pill Politics, and God bless your brother. Keep up the great work, sir. Thank you, I'll be in touch. And that was Dave Kopaz, a great patriot. I mean, I've seen him speak myself. And um, before we end the segment, that once again, behind the green mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey, available on InfoWarsStore.com. And that will conclude our September 7th, 2012 edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. And this is Dan Bedondi signing off. We'll see you next Monday at 7 p.m. Central on PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWars.com. See you next week and God bless.